Hi, I'm Brian Watrous of VMware Education. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to set up variable binding for a workflow. Now, the workflow that we're going to create in this particular case is going to be very similar to the Hello World uh, workflow that we created in the previous video, but we're going to go above and beyond its capabilities. So we're going to actually create a whole new workflow this time. I'll right click and choose New Workflow. And I will call this workflow variable binding. Again, when you create a workflow, you should set its version and you should set its description to save us a little time here. I'm going to skip that step, but you should not. And what I'm going to do is go to the inputs tab where I'm going to create two input parameters. We're going to ask the user to supply his or her first name. The type of that variable will be a string. Again, we should always type descriptions. Uh, here, I'm definitely going to type a description. I'm going to ask the user for their first name. And I'm going to create another input parameter for specifying their last name. Again, that's a string, but I do need to set a description, so I'll type last name. So thus far, our workflow has two input parameters called first name and last name. Next, I'm going to create an output parameter called full name. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this workflow is actually concatenating those two names together. And this is the variable that will store that information in. Again, that's going to be a string. And uh, here we should type a description. Uh, strictly speaking, it's not as important to set a description for output parameters as it is with input parameters, but you should still do so. So I'm going to say this is the, the full name. And then I'm going to create one other type of variable. Again, we've got two input parameters, one output parameter, but I'm going to create one more variable of type attribute. Now the place you go to create attributes is the general tab. In the lower section of the general tab, if you click on the add attribute button, you can add an attribute. I'm going to name this attribute, we'll just call it temp. You'll see what I'm going to use this for shortly here. It's going to be a string. And I'm not going to actually assign a value up front, but rather the value of the variable called temp is going to be assigned in my workflow. In other words, we're going to set the value programmatically. And the description here, I'll just say this is a temp variable for the username. So we now have multiple input parameters, one output parameter, and one attribute. I'm now going to go to the schema tab and I'm going to drag two schema elements onto my schema. These are both scriptable tasks and the first one I'm going to change the label to concatenate name and in the second for the second schema element I will label it log name. Now what's going to happen here in this particular workflow is the workflow is going to ask the user to supply their first name and last name and we're going to append or concatenate those two pieces of information together and store them into the variable called temp. Now the reason why we're setting up this variable called temp is to illustrate passing the value of a variable from one schema element to the next. So we're, we could conceivably do all these steps in one schema element, but to illustrate the use of an attribute, we're going to set temp equal to first name plus last name in the first schema element, and then we'll pass that temp attribute to log name so that we can log the actual value. Now you'll recall from the earlier videos in this series of videos that it's not enough to simply create the input and output parameters and the attributes. You, have to explicitly specify which schema elements are allowed to see those different variables. To do so, I'm going to select the first schema element, concatenate name, and in here, if I edit that schema element, we can go to the in tab to set up this schema element so that it can see our two input parameters. To do so, I'll click the Bind to Workflow Parameters button, 
And you'll notice that when we bind input, in, when, when we use the in tab to bind parameters, we not only see our input parameters, we'll also see any attributes that we've created. Now for the moment, I'm simply going to add in first name and last name so that this schema element labeled concatenate name can see those two input parameters. But we also want concatenate name to be able to see the temp variable. Now you may have noticed a moment ago that we saw the temp variable, that attribute on the in tab, but that's not actually where we're going to go to set up the binding for this variable in this particular case. The reason is that in this schema element, we want to write out to the temp variable the first name and the last name concatenated together. We want to write out to the schema, excuse me, to the temp attribute. So we're not going to go to the in tab, but rather the out tab. Once again, we'll click on the binding button, and we should see again our temp attribute. And sure enough, we do. We're going to bind that so that this schema element can write out to the temp attribute. Now, once you've set up that binding, you can actually uh, see this in a more visual manner by going to the Visual Binding tab. This area of the Visual Binding tab is showing us information about this schema element. And the columns on the left and the right are showing us information about the workflow in, in, in general. In this workflow, we have two input parameters that are being passed in to the concatenate name schema element. And uh, we happen to have set up the variables in the workflow and in the schema element so that they match. So first name, first name, last name, last name. Uh, you don't have to have those names be identical, but in this case it's easier so that we don't have to remember a bunch of variable names. Again, in the visual binding tab, we can also see on the right side of the concatenate name schema element that it has a single variable that it can write out to. It can write out to the attribute called temp. Now that we've set up that variable binding, if we go to the schema, excuse me, to the scripting tab, we can write code that says things such as temp equals, and notice the variable uh, has been colored in pink to indicate that this is a variable that's been properly bound. And if you'll recall correctly, uh, I'm not always such a good typist, so instead of typing that name, I can simply click on the variable name, in this case it's an attribute, over here on the top left-hand corner of the schema editor. So temp name equals, well, it's going to equal the first name plus the last name. Now, JavaScript uh, is a language in which statements such as this one are terminated with semicolons, so I'll type a semicolon, and conceptually, we've done what we need to do here, except we don't want to shove first name and last name together. We need a space in between, otherwise it's going to be ugly. So I'm going to add in a space. So in our first schema element, we set up our variable binding so that we could write out to the temp variable the concatenated string first name plus the last name. Moving onwards to the, I could close the schema editor, but notice you can simply click on the next schema element. Moving to the next schema element, we want it to log the value of that concatenated name. And while we're at it, why don't we also save that output um, so that it can be viewed outside of the workflow by whoever's calling the workflow itself. In order to be able to read the current state of the temp attribute, we'll go to the in tab, click the binding button, and we don't need first name, last name, because we've already, we already used those in the previous schema element, but we want this second schema element to be able to read from the temp vi variable. And recall that the temp variable is an attribute, we use attributes to pass information between schema elements. And if we want our schema element to actually save the concatenated name so that the caller of the workflow can make use of that information, we're going to go to the out tab and set up an outward binding 
to the output parameter where we want the user to be able to access the information. Again, the visual binding tab gives us a graphical view of what we set up. The log name schema element has one inward binding from an attribute called temp and one outward binding to an output parameter called full name. If we edit the scripting in this second schema element, we can now say things like system.log and we could say something terribly exciting like hello followed by the user's name. Again, I can type the name or I can simply click on the link up here. But we'll do our logging as we've done before. And in addition, we're going to type the following code. We're going to say full name equals whatever we put into temp in the previous schema element. We needed an inward binding for the temp attribute so that we could read the current value of temp. And we needed an outward binding for the output parameter called full name so that we could write out that concatenated name to full name. Now I want you to notice before we run this workflow that there's uh, essentially two chunks of code here. These top two lines are logging and the bottom line is saving some value as an output parameter. I'm going to close the schema editor. I'll validate the workflow. Looks like it's 100% correct. I'll save and close this workflow. And now when I run the workflow, I'm asked to supply two pieces of information. A first name, such as Brian, and a last name, such as Watrous. When I run this workflow, we see it runs through the workflow. We see that it creates a workflow execution token. And if we look at the workflow execution tokens logs tab, we can see the logging message that the first two codes of line output to the log. But in addition to the logging, which is in effect contained here within the workflow itself, at times we want to supply that information to whoever is calling the workflow. Now, as I've said in a previous video in this series, conceptually we think of the person who's invoking the workflow as being a human being, but sometimes it's not a human being. Sometimes your workflow is being called by another workflow, or your workflow is being called by a third-party program that's launching orchestrator workflows, in which case they're not going to go into the logs to find the value. Instead, they want to have immediate access to the, the output parameter itself. So to see what that workflow that's calling this workflow, or to see what the caller would see, if you go to the variables tab, you will see not just the output parameter that we set. Notice that the output parameter has the correct value, Brian Watrous, but you can also, in the variables tab, see any input parameters, such as first name and last name, and any attributes. Um, all of the input parameters, output parameters, and attributes are visible here in the variables tab, but only the output parameters are going to be visible to a third-party program that's calling your workflow, or a workflow that's calling your workflow. Now we're going to explore this issue in more detail uh, in upcoming videos, but in the very next video, what we're going to be taking a look at is something called input presentation. Our workflow that we've created right now is pretty straightforward. It only has two input parameters, but as your workflows get more and more complex and have more and more workflow per input parameters, it's essential that you set up something called input parameter presentation. So please join me again in the next video where we'll talk about input presentation. For in-depth, hands-on orchestrator training, enroll in the VMware vCenter Orchestrator Develop Workflows class and connect with other orchestrator developers online at communities.vmware.com. Thank you.